What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the RA Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And today we're going to take a little trip down memory lane and revisit none other than the GTX 970, a hugely popular GPU that originally launched back in 2014. It was not only at the top of the Steam hardware survey at one point, but was also part of a huge controversy. Bruh. Today, we're gonna throw a bunch of games at it and see if it can still hang in there for 1080p Gaming in 2023. And we'll get right into that right after a quick word from our sponsor. VIP URCD Key has you covered with fully licensed codes to activate your favorite games and software. Purchasing your key is super easy. All you have to do is click on the item that you want, click buy to add it to your cart. Once in your cart, you can now enter my promo code RAV20. After adding the promo code, you'll see your savings pop up and you can then purchase your product with your chosen payment method. Finding and entering your Windows 10 CD key is super easy. All you have to do is go over to your user profile, find your purchase and click view keys and codes to reveal your new CD key. Then all you have to do is go to settings and windows, click on update and security, click on activation, and finally click on change product key and paste your new key into the window and click next. You'll now have a fully licensed version of Windows 10 with no watermark. Check the links in the description to start saving now. Okay, so as we begin our trip down memory lane, here's a little tech history that you may not know. The GTX 970 originally launched on September 19th, 2014, and it was actually an incredibly successful graphics card for Nvidia. It even went on to become the most popular GPU on the Steam hardware survey in 2016. However, its time at the top came with a bit of controversy. The GTX 970 was sold as having four gigabytes of VRAM, which turned out to not be 100% true. This eventually led to a lawsuit. This particular lawsuit originated back in February 2015 and alleged that Nvidia falsely advertised the GTX 970, citing that the 970 was pitched as a four gigabyte card, but it was later discovered that 500 megabytes of its memory was separate from the main pipeline, effectively leaving most users with 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM. This all ended with Nvidia entering a settlement agreement in which they had to pay back $30 US to all of those involved in the suit and also cover the attorney fees, which added up to $1.3 $3 million. So would you have bought this card given all the controversy? Let me know in the comments below. Well, I actually did. Back when I was a penny pinching gamer, I was very attracted to its $329 price tag and even more so the discounts on it because of all the controversy surrounding it. Now our specific card we'll be using for today's testing is the EVGA GTX 970 super clocked ACX 2.0 version. This card used the GM204 graphics processor utilizing Nvidia's Maxwell architecture. I was able to snag this super clean copy of the 970 from somebody on my local Facebook marketplace for for only $80. And this is a price that like you will constantly see this card going for right now, or even less on your local market probably, or even eBay. Now we already did a video on the most popular GPU among gamers in 2022, according to the Steam hardware survey, the GTX 1650. In that testing, we saw that it actually delivered a surprisingly good play experience at 1080p when paired with a newer six core processor and 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. The only thing that still made me question it as something suggests to you guys though, is its price. Honestly, it's still a bit high in my opinion. So this made me start thinking, you know, is there another card out there that will offer a similar gaming experience that you can actually get on the used market for much cheaper? Enter the GTX 970. So today we're gonna put it through the same test and see if this could actually be a steal for all of you gamers out there. So let's get started. And to get this started, we had to first go ahead and install our GTX 970 into our test system, which is the same test system that we used in our last video testing the 1650, which includes the Intel Core i5-12400F, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and of course the 970 that we're using right now. And now the only difference with this card versus the last one we used uh, is now this card requires two six pin PCIe connectors. So there's a little bit of a power difference there, obviously. But either way, let's go ahead and get started with some benchmarks. And we're going to run these benchmarks all at 1080p just like last time and at the exact same settings as we ran with the GTX 1650. 
And starting off our gaming benchmarks, we hopped into Overwatch 2, in which we were able to get a very smooth 138 average FPS, which I know isn't a lot versus the 132 average we got with the 1650, but hey, it's still a win and the cheaper card did produce some more FPS. And now our next benchmark is where things got a little wonky and actually took a turn for the worse. So in Diablo 2 Resurrected, we were only able to get up to an average FPS of 70 versus our average of 83 last time with the GTX 1650. So I'm not sure if this game just favors newer hardware or something like that. But in this game, we already started to see that, you know, maybe the GTX 970's age may be doing worse for it. Now, you're going to start to see a similar theme here as the video goes on. But in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer on shipment, we actually had a clear victory over the 1650 while we were able to average 109 FPS versus our just about 85 last time and in Warzone 2.0 is the exact same thing where we were actually able to average 85 FPS whereas last time we were only able to average 72 as an average FPS so clearly this game may just favor the technology in the 970 or the 970 may just have a little more graphics power to push this game a little further. Next a title that saw absolutely zero difference and is what basically I expected to see the entire time recording this video uh, is Apex Legends and we were able to get the exact same FPS number of 112 average over the course of this run so it just shows this game is very well optimized and it takes advantage of both cards equally and now we're going to move on to a title that i did not test with the 1650 and the reason i wanted to test it with the 970 here is because of that whole vram issue i talked about now this game won't actually allow you to increase its graphical fidelity any higher if you do not have enough vram to support it but luckily we were still able to run the high preset with this game and we were able to squeak out an average of 70 fps which is honestly not that good considering this game is so well optimized so honestly I would consider lowering the settings with this card so next if you're a Fortnite player you're going to be very very excited about this because this card was able to absolutely demolish this game getting an average of about 183 FPS throughout my run here in the very crowded town I was in with a ton of players as you guys can see me constantly fighting this entire run and I don't know what happened here guys but this thing was just absolutely killing it and uh offered another super super smooth play experience for me so i was able to get a ton of kills bringing the 970 back down to earth though was the witcher 3 wild hunt enhanced edition though in which we were able to get an average fps of 83 which was better than the 1650 but only by a little bit and if you look at the frame rate averages like just the actual frame rates themselves as we're playing it's pretty similar to what we were getting even though the 1650 was more around the low 70s but in other areas, this card did a lot better, so I'll consider that a win. And a game that was definitely not a win for the GTX 970 was Cyberpunk 2077, in which we were only able to average an FPS of about 50 in the benchmark, and it was like that around the actual game too, but really, when you're walking around the street, the real frame rate is more around 45 FPS, and yeah, this didn't look good for the 970 at all. And on to another game that did not do so well for the 970, it was Red Dead Redemption 2. And in the built-in benchmark, we we're only able to get around 50 FPS average. And in the actual game, it was even worse, with us only getting about an average of 44 or 45 FPS with a lot of dips that were even lower. So yeah, if you're running games like this, you might want to skip the 970. And now to end things on a good note, we did try out Escape from Tarkov again with the 970. And in a factory raid offline, we were able to go ahead and get 116 FPS average. And on the new streets map offline, we were able to get an average of 58 FPS, which, yeah, is definitely playable. Not ideal, obviously, but you know what? This is not the most optimized game in the world, especially not the new streets map. So, hey, at least it can play it. Okay, so what are our takeaways? from our testing with this card right here. First off, in certain games, the 970 is surprisingly better for our money than the much more expensive 1650. In games like Fortnite, the 970 walked all over the 1650 and offered a seriously smooth play experience at 1080p. On the other hand though, in some of our harder to run titles like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, the 970 here seriously struggled to even get anywhere near our target of 60 FPS and showed us that certain titles may favor the newer tech inside of the 1650. It also reminded me that just because a card has a higher score in 3D Mark tests like Fire Strike and Time Spy, that doesn't always translate to being amazing in every game that you're gonna test. So let's go ahead and try to answer the title of the video. 
is this card a good buy for 1080p gaming in 2023? Well, unfortunately, I have to give you guys the cop-out answer of, it depends on what you're looking to play. If your game library is full of DX11 games, you can definitely save some money and grab a super cheap GTX 970 and have a great 1080p gaming experience as shown by our benchmarks in this video. But if you're looking to play more of those big open world games with much more going on in them in the background, you may need to look towards a different card like the 1650 that we tested in the last video, a 1660, an RX 580, or something with much newer hardware in it and more VRAM as well. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to you guys and please make sure to leave a like on the video and comment down below if you're still gaming on a 970 or something similar. Also, if you guys think there's a better option out there and you want to see me test it, let me know in the comments as well because I would love to see that. So that's going to do it for our tech adventure today. So please go ahead and get subscribed to the channel if you aren't already and hit that notification bell so you can always know when I post a new video. Take care and I'll catch you guys later.